score. Hi guys, I hope you're doing really well. My name is Sarah and welcome to What the Horror, the channel where we talk about horror movies old and new. Today we are talking about one of the biggest movies in the horror genre, 2004's Saw. I'm even wearing my Saw t-shirt for the occasion. There's little Adam poking his head up. Oh, isn't it a thing of beauty? Saw is one of the most influential horror movies in film history and spawned one of the most successful horror franchises that has spanned 19 years and 10 films, including the up and coming Saw 10 being released in October. In 2010, Saw entered the Guinness Book of Records for most successful horror franchise and while it doesn't still hold that title, it is still the fifth most successful after It, Resident Evil, Alien and The Conjuring Universe. Saw became part of pop culture in a huge way with merchandise up the wazoo, a roller coaster in England, cosplayers and references in shows such as Robot Chicken, The Sopranos, The American Office and many more. It also influenced horror movies and filmmakers, some even claiming its serialised style of storytelling, calling back on earlier films and dropping in seeds to be picked up later, has influenced both the Marvel Universe and recent Star Wars films. Saw has a large and loyal fan base, who many people involved in the Saw franchise, from Lee Winnell to Shawnee Smith, say are what elevated the films to what they became. Lee even claims the characters and Jigsaw's legacy now belong to the fans. So how did Saw, this hugely influential film, come about and what is its success rooted in? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. Well, actually, as you probably saw from the title, we are doing it in two parts. Part one, we'll cover creators James and Lee, the idea and inspirations, getting the film made, the actors, the story and the characters. And then in the next episode, in part two, we will cover the traps, the sets, filming and post-production, that ending and finally the film's legacy. So before we get into the deep dive, if you're new here and enjoy horror films, then I would highly recommend clicking that subscribe button to become part of the What The Horror family, because there is a whole treasure trove of episodes, movie reviews, studies of the monsters of horror, the true stories behind the horror films, and of course, like today's episode, deep dives into horror films. And also hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on part two. Just a heads up that this episode will contain major spoilers for Saw, but let's be real, you guys know this film and the twist, but I'm just letting you know in case you haven't seen the film yet. Saw is the creation of longtime collaborative creative team Lee Winnell and James Wan. Lee and James met back when they were 17, 18 years old in Melbourne, Australia, when they started at the Royal Melbourne Institute of Technology. Considering they're both 46 now, that is a hell of a long friendship. They instantly hit it off and became firm friends, bonding over their shared love of cinema. They realised that they both shared the same dream to make a feature film. The pairing not only worked well because of their close friendship, but also because they wanted to make the same kind of films, and at the time, they complemented each other professionally. James was passionate to direct, and Lee wanted to write and act. They spent years making short films, but eventually decided to make that feature film. And we spent many years just making little short films between he and myself, and then eventually um, we decided that uh, we want to be noticed for a feature. Both were adamant that they didn't want to create a film or idea for someone else to make. They wanted to make it themselves. According to Lee and James, it's a small film industry in Australia and they felt it can be difficult to get films made there. The films are funded by the government and they felt that they didn't have the right contacts or know anyone in the film industry, so they would have to make the film themselves with their own money. All they needed was a good idea. James Wan came up with the premise of two guys trapped in a bathroom and one has to kill the other. He just pitched the sort of small uh, premise of the film, which was two guys in a bathroom. Whenever I don't like one of James's ideas, I say, yeah, that's good. <laughs> so I said, yeah, that's good. 
And he's like, oh, and then I hung up. And then I went away and thought about it and rang him up. And I said, no, 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 wait, it's really good. As the two worked together, the story grew outwards to include several other characters. But the reason it was based around just two guys in one location is because they originally had very little to no money to make it. And they felt that two guys in a bathroom and a handful of characters would be a better way to make a cheaper film. I mean, they never imagined having the budget and cast they ended up with when Lee wrote the script and they just never changed it. So in Saw, there is this interesting contrast between the indie, almost student film feel that Saw has at times, and then the presence of Hollywood actors. Lee and James originally wanted to make more of a controlled film. In the beginning, they didn't set out to make a gory horror film. They wanted something more controlled, as James describes it, in the vein of an Alfred Hitchcock film. But James also explained that that control comes with more money and time than they had. James met with Carrie Elwes to discuss the film, and he explained the Alfred Hitchcock theory and angle to Carrie, talking about how in horror it is often better to leave more to the audience's imagination, that the sounds off camera and what is implied can be far more effective than what is on screen. Carrie believes that even though they didn't get the controlled film they envisioned, they did still achieve this aspect of it. This is, of course, in reference to Lawrence Gordon sawing his foot off in the finale. We don't actually see him cutting it off, but the sounds, Lawrence's frantic desperation, and Adam's horrified reactions all really sell it and make us believe we've just seen him cut the limb off. The less is more approach has clearly not just come from their love of Alfred Hitchcock, but from some of their other favourite films, such as Jaws and Alien, which are both perfect examples of a lot of the horror being left off screen and to the audience's imagination. Both Lee and James admit to Saw being sprinkled with a mixture of inspirations. Lee describes it as a mixture of ideas from childhood nightmares to their love of noir films, horror films and Alfred Hitchcock films. The Hitchcock influences can be seen in Adam being a photographer and using the camera flash to light his apartment to find the intruder, which is similar to James Stewart's character in Rear Window using the flash to blind his assailant. In the hotel scene where the intern picks up the phone, which we get a close-up shot of, which is very similar to shots in Dial M for Murder, but also in the basic setup of the story following two people in one location, which is the same setup for Rope. And in an interview, Lee does state Rope as one of his and James's inspirations. Other film nods and inspirations can be found in the scene with Zepp hiding in the closet, which is based on the character of Billy in Black Christmas, one of James's favourite horror films. And the black gloves which Zepp wears are a nod to Dario Argento killers. I mentioned in my Lipstick Face Demon episode that Lee and James cite Argento as an inspiration in terms of his use of colour. And they use colour so effectively in Saw, like Insidious, they use it to create a more intense and visceral feeling within the audience. Originally, James wanted Saw to have a more fantasy comic book style to it. And while this was changed, Carrie Elwes believes that the use of vivid colour in the otherwise gritty, realistic film adds an element of the fantastical that they wanted. I would personally say that colour is one of the most identifiable aspects of Saw movies. James states in the audio commentary that he used green to represent Jigsaw within the film, so his lair and the traps, except the bathroom trap, are all lit in green. What is clear about Lee and James as creators of horror films is that they don't like false scares. They believe that if you're going to scare your audience, then make it a real scare. Make the payoff worth the build-up. So all of the scares in Saw are real. And a lot of the scares in Saw are apparently based on nightmares Lee and James have had or genuine fears that they have. So for example, Zepp watching the girl sleep um, is based on James's fear of being asleep and waking up to find someone looming over you watching you. After they came up with the idea for Saw, Lee then went away and wrote the script. They spent two years crafting the idea and the script, adding bits here and changing bits there, such as James adding in Billy the Puppet. Apparently, Lee wanted to wait until there was a final draft of the script to show James, but he did describe the reverse bear trap scene to him. He said, quote, I couldn't help myself with that one scene, end quote. And James apparently responded, that's great. If we put a creepy doll in it, it'll be perfect. 
Once the script was completed, the plan was now to make the film with their own money in Australia. But Lee and James's manager, Stacey Testro, had read the script and encouraged both of them to try find funding, suggesting they should take the script to Hollywood. Stacey sent the script to an agent in LA who loved it and wanted to meet with Lee and James. That's when Lee and James decided to make Saw, the short film. They wanted to be able to go to the meeting in LA and have their pitch and script, but they also wanted to show what the film would look like and to showcase what James could do as a director and what Lee could do as an actor. So they borrowed money from family and friends and shot the reverse bear trap scene with Lee playing Shawnee Smith's role. The shot was really well received by the agent in LA and the producers who the agent showed it to. Greg Hoffman, no, not that one, Mark Berg and Oren Cools. The three producers were at the time looking for a TV project, but after watching the shot, they went away and read the script and decided they wanted to make the film. Luckily, they also said that James could direct it and Lee could play Adam. The shot was also eventually shown to Carrie Elwes, who again, absolutely loved it and describes it as quote, beautifully shot. After Lee and James signed with the producers, it was a very quick turnaround and they began filming after only a couple of months with a budget of $1 million. Everyone tells us that we should be thanking our lucky stars. In my view, this is the norm, but lots of people have been telling me, no, this isn't the norm at all. This is not how it usually goes. Producers Mark and Oren had a management company at the time and they approached some of their clients with the project and that is how Danny Glover and Carrie Elwes got involved. Both Lee and James feel that having such big and well-established names attached helped Saw appear as more than an indie niche film and gave it a level of credibility. As two young men straight out of film school, they were also completely starstruck by their cast and felt incredibly lucky to be working with so many talented actors. According to Tobin Bell in the documentary Game Changer, The Legacy of Saw, he did Saw for three reasons. Number one. I, I was like three guys locked in a bathroom? Well, that's so, uh, it's waiting for Godot. I mean, who, who, makes, who makes a movie about three guys locked in a bathroom? Number two. I had never worked with Danny Glover, and I wanted to do that. And number three. When I got to the moment when he gets up from the floor in the script, I had not anticipated that moment. So I thought, if they shoot this moment well, it's gonna be a fabulous moment. When casting Tobin Bell, James took what he calls an Orson Welles approach and looked at it tonally, listening to his voice. The voice is integral to the role of Jigsaw, and let's face it, Tobin Bell has a awesome voice. James was elated when they found out they managed to get Shawnee Smith as Amanda Young, as he had been a fan of her for years and had a little bit of a crush on her as well. On the one day that Shawnee filmed all of her scenes, she was incredibly ill with a fever, but everyone said what a trooper she was coming in and pushing through it. Apparently she found the reverse bear trap really uncomfortable, in spite of it being made of aluminium aluminum for my American audience, but she said she channeled how rubbish she felt and just put all of that into the performance. According to multiple people on set, Michael Emerson, while being quite unnerving while in character, was one of the funniest people on the set. James said he has a great sense of humour with a really dry wit, and both Lee and James highly praise Michael's performance as Zepp. Fun fact, both Michael Emerson and Tobin Bell are both theatrically trained Shakespearean actors. What came across the most to me in my weeks of research and hours upon hours of saw footage is that Kerry Elwes is Saw's most passionate supporter. He is so proud to have been a part of it. Doing it with, with love and with passion, clearly not for the money. It's like, you know, I feel blessed. When Kerry and James met for the first time, Kerry was instantly impressed with how prepared James was, having brought notes, the script and sketches, including a sketch of what he envisioned the movie poster looking like. 
I mentioned earlier that Carrie had been shown the short film and absolutely loved it and he said it didn't take long at all for James to impress him and for him to want to be involved in the film. Lee describes Carrie as a gentleman and such a generous person, having never made them feel like they were kids working with an established actor, but instead he was always encouraging them and telling them they needed to teach him as he didn't know horror. Both of them were just so starstruck to be working with Carrie on their movie. On the audio commentary, Carrie said that Saw was the most fun he'd ever had on a film shoot. He describes Lee and James as fun, not taking themselves too seriously, but incredibly passionate about their desire to make the film and to do it the way they want to do it, and that they had great improvisional ideas for when they couldn't do it the way they wanted. He said they're, quote, creative and fun to be around, kept a very relaxed set and a very fun set, end quote. As well as being the writer, Lee Winnell stars as Adam, one of the two lead protagonists. According to Lee, he went, quote, full on physical method, end quote, and ended up hurting himself on a couple of occasions. He even, in the beginning, considered doing method and sleeping in the bathroom set for the duration of the shoot, but very quickly changed his mind. I think it was after maybe the first few hours. Apparently both Lee and Carrie ended up improvising a lot of bits. For example, recovering the tape recorder with the bath plug and shirt. That wasn't in the original script. Actually, according to Lee, despite writing the script, he also improvised a lot of his lines, but most of which James ended up cutting out. In the audio commentary, James and Carrie discuss this dual role and the conflict that can come from being the writer, but also as an actor who improvises things. I've had to put Mr. Writer Man away in a box. I've just tried to be an, an, an actor as much as possible. It's good. I'm very respectful. <laughs> I never say, but that close up of me is way better. <laughs> what is very evident is how well the whole team got on, cast and crew, and just how much fun they had on set, with Carrie describing the set as always laughing and cracking up, and how this was important. This is a very dark and bleak film at times, and so to have that humour and fun was integral to the filming. Saw is a twisted morality tale, learning from the killer how to appreciate life. According to James, he and Lee really wanted to infuse some philosophy behind the story. In the audio commentary, James says, quote, You have a villain who forces you to be good. We don't necessarily agree with that, where you're forced to do something. But it's just kind of ironic because we are now living in a society where if you don't conform, you're seen as a bad guy. End quote. What both James and Lee love about the story that they came up with is how you're instantly in it. There is no build-up in Saw. The film opens with darkness in order to put the audience in the same shoes as Adam and Lawrence. Just like the characters, the audience has no idea what's going on, instantly creating intrigue. Carrie Elwes adds to this opinion by saying that the game begins as soon as the characters listen to the tape, and as an audience, you're instantly drawn into the story only seven minutes in. What stands out about Saw as a horror film is all of the little details dotted here and there that seemingly mean nothing at the time, but then come back into play later, adding to the story. For example, the bag that Adam throws in the bathtub, and the camera flash in the garage. Garage? I've never said garage in my life. In the garage. In the audio commentary, James says he thinks, quote, Lee did a great job of adding in twists and turns along the way, end quote. Saw is very character and dialogue driven, so they wanted to add in elements that keep the audience engaged and also move the story along. With the addition of the twists and turns, the original Saw became something of a whodunit. And who doesn't love a whodunit? Something, according to Lee, that he and James never intended. He says it wasn't about that. But unless you've had the film spoilt for you on a first watch, it is hard to know who the killer is. And the script makes a lot of the characters suspicious, including Adam and the good doctor themselves. You know who I am. According to Lee, the traps were only a small element of the first film. He considers the meat of the story being the two guys stuck in the bathroom. He describes it as a locked room thriller 
and that what he loves about the story is the non-linear puzzle that all leads up to the twist ending. And James has said, quote, Saw was never really about just killing people in cool ways, end quote. Oh my, how the franchise has changed. Saw's story plays around a lot with the idea of life, death, and illness, more specifically, cancer. This theme would carry on through the franchise, but the seeds were sown here in the original Saw. In the original, there is a play on things being surface level. Lawrence Gordon is an oncologist who deals with cancer. As Lee puts it, quote, where you can on the outside appear well and fine, but in your body, cancer is boiling away with sickness, end quote. Earlier in the film, we have scenes set up in the city, the surface level, and by the end of the film, the scenes are set in the dirty, grimy sewers, the sickness underneath. As a writer, Lee's films are usually based in some way around illness, death and mortality. This fascination and want to explore this comes from an experience he had at a young age. In his early to mid-twenties, Lee had a health scare. He began displaying physical symptoms, headaches and heart palpitations. He said that at that age he was too young to understand psychological problems and became convinced that he was dying. After seeking medical help, he discovered that he was suffering with anxiety. And while he made changes in his life to ease this, this experience influenced his writing Saw and creating the character of Jigsaw. Lee said in an interview, quote, I think it can end up being good therapy in a lot of ways. When you get your subconscious on paper, it's like a mental sauna. You sweat out all the dark stuff. And I think that saw is very much a product of who I was in my early to mid twenties. I think I had a pretty dark nihilistic worldview, hence the movie Saw, end quote. You and me both. Lee and James have said that saw does perhaps have a very cynical look at life, the pointlessness of it. A lot of the story is about when you don't see what is around you, what you've got, you lose track of it. They give Detective Tap as an example. He struggles through life only focusing on the character of Lawrence and where does it ultimately lead him? Down in the dirty sewers, dead. The original Saw introduces us to some of the main and most interesting characters of the franchise. Our main protagonists, Dr. Lawrence Gordon and Adam Stanhite, Amanda Young, and our antagonist, Jigsaw. Lawrence Gordon is a very flawed character. He's overly confident at work, cheating on his wife, and, you know, pretty arrogant. Dr. Gordon has a... Uh has a level of arrogance to him because his life has been so perfect and so easy that he's sort of, his head has grown a little. But in the original Saw, our trap victims are more complex than other trap victims. Like I said, Lawrence is flawed, but he's not a completely bad guy. His love for his daughter and his patience and care with Adam in the beginning show us a nicer, kinder side to him. And it is his love for his daughter that allows us as an audience to believe it when Lawrence loses his mind by the end of the film. If he was just a nasty piece of work, him sawing off his foot to save his family wouldn't work. Like Lawrence, Adam is also a flawed character. He's not a bad guy who, in my opinion, deserves to end up in one of Jigsaw's traps. Sure, He's a bit of a waster, making a less than moral living. But the main problem with Adam and what lands him in this trap is his attitude on the world. He is a very angry young man. Lee explains that the line from Adam, give me that sweet, sweet cancer, I honestly don't care, is not to show Adam as a bad guy, but to show how very little Adam values his life. James and Lee describe Adam in the beginning as reckless, angry, a loose cannon, and like an animal pulling on his chains. They make the point that he starts out by metaphorically and literally drowning in his panic when he's in the bathtub. While Lawrence, his doctor skills coming through, is calm and collected and controlled. He tries to soothe Adam and think logically, but they wanted these characters to switch personas by the end of the film. We see this switch really start to take place around the 57 minute mark after Lawrence remembers how he ended up in the bathroom. And by the end of the film, Adam ends up being the one trying to calm Lawrence down, saying we can find a way out, while Lawrence is the one losing control and almost foaming at the mouth. According to James, in the initial scenes, he chose to make the camera reflect the character and almost become part of them. So for example, 
When the camera is looking at Adam, it's handheld and moves quickly and erratically. And when the camera is looking at Lawrence, it's on a tripod or dolly and is very controlled like Lawrence. The whole point of the story in the original Saw, according to Lee and James, is to build up to the reveal at the end. It's about reducing these two characters to a primal state and seeing how far they can be pushed. Lee says that, quote, Jigsaw's whole thing is putting people into these trap situations where that little bit of their brain that's still a caveman or cavewoman at the back of their minds takes charge and he wants to see people running only on that survival mechanism and to reduce someone down to that state you've got to reduce all their defenses down end quote as for Jigsaw he is a huge presence in the film, lurking in the shadows, his voice pouring out of the tapes and pulling the strings. But as Lee points out, aside from the end, one hooded chase scene and a brief clip in the hospital, Tobin Bell, or Jigsaw, is just lying on the floor for two hours. They really did such an incredible job of making this villain, this antagonist, larger than life and who would go on to become one of horror's biggest villains, with very little actual screen time. We spend the film not seeing the villain and trying to figure out who it is. And so they instead made Jigsaw's personality come through the theatrics, through the traps and the voice on the tapes. Back when James and Lee were thinking of Saw, James visualized a much more fantasy style film, much more fantastical as he puts it. He wanted it less grounded in reality and have Jigsaw dressed in the style of Little Red Riding Hood. But as they were filming and it became grittier and more grounded in reality, James felt that the red cape looked out of place. And so he took the red cape they had made and simply turned it inside out to make it a black one. But you can still see the red lining inside. In fact, there is only one scene, the scene in the garage, where um, the pig mask person jumps Lawrence. That is the only one where you see him with his red hood. <laughs> and the pig mask was another of the fantastical elements James had envisioned. But from a story point of view, Lee explains that back when it was going to be a real pig's head, he and James thought it was a good representation of how Jigsaw sees himself rotting from the inside because of the illness. Okay guys, so that is part one of my deep dive into 2004's So, I hope you've enjoyed it so far, perhaps even learned something you didn't know before. I'm sorry that I'm having to make it two parts. I don't usually do that, but I cannot tell you how much saw footage, special features, interviews, behind the scenes, audio commentary I have consumed in the last three to four weeks. I have been drowning in saw and living my best life. But as always, let me know down in the comments your thoughts on this film. Do you love Saw? Or have you never really been able to manage the Saw films? And what is your opinion on the creators James and Lee? I'll be covering my own opinion and thoughts on Saw and the creators in the next episode. As I said, I will be releasing part two next week, so make sure you're subscribed and hit the notification bell so you don't miss it, as we'll be talking about the traps, that ending and Saw's legacy. But in the meantime, thank you as always for stopping by. I really do appreciate it. Take care of yourselves, try not to wake up in any traps, and I will talk to you in the next episode. Bye guys.